so hi guys so today we would be looking at how you can run tensorflow and keras on your local machine uh, there is already a platform available on uh, google that is google collaboratory which is the best platform for uh, running your tensorflow commands and uh, machine learning commands but still if someone of you wants to run your commands or run multiple commands uh, and codes on your virtual machine uh, on your machine uh, there are also available option, options available for that so first of all you would need to download tensorflow but uh, for using the machine learning commands and tensorflow commands specifically i would prefer you to you recommend you to use visual studio code because except machine learning you uh, also you can do a lot of things here including web development to android to flutter uh, anything you want so yeah i personally use it so first of all you need to go to terminal and as the terminal start, the first thing you need to know is install TensorFlow. I hope you must have got Python in your computer if you're starting with machine learning. So yeah, you need to write pip install TensorFlow, and it would install the TensorFlow uh, on your on your local machine. So as my TensorFlow as has already been installed, so it, it's uh, it's not sure uh, it's not showing me anything because it's all it, it has already been installed. But if you install it at the first phase. Uh, it would take a time I, uh, it would take time around three to four minutes for installation and yeah it's showing me the warning of my pip has been outdated so yeah now coming to the next part that is extensions so usually we use jupyter uh, notebooks for running tensorflow commands so suppose i will do write jupyter here and uh, here you can see the the jupyter is being shown here you can install and uninstall it so after that what you need to do you need to click here new file and uh, just uh, just save this file as do here save as and in the save as just simply name it anything that can be trial and see when you are asked what type you want to save it as name it as, uh, there would be an option available that would be jupiter and simply i would do trial now you can even do that or I have already created one file. I would just open that. I have already saved it as I would do Celsius to Fahrenheit. So yeah, you can see this. This file has been created by me a few seconds ago. I have written some basic tensorflow commands here. And uh, what you uh, need to do is simply uh, run these commands that is execute all. You can see all the things are very similar to Google Collaboratory. And just click run and it would first connect you to the uh, kernel and while that is happening i would just download another file that is the minis dataset file if you don't know anything about google collaboratory or tensorflow or what is happening here i would recommend you to watch some uh, tensorflow for beginner playlist i've explained all uh, in detail there now i would like to open another file that would be the minis hand handwritten dataset file because uh, i want that uh, even the big projects are being shown running here so first of all i would just run this basic project that is this and i would simply run this you can see it is being running and it may take time than uh, more time than the google collaboratory because it depends on a computer uh, local machines configurations if your local machine doesn't have a gpu because mine doesn't have so it would take time because you are uh, running that on your CPU and it is uh, using a lot of power. So I would just run this and it is giving me 213. So yeah, it's working totally fine. And I would just don't save. I would just remove this. Now coming to the next part. That is I have downloaded this file from uh, the uh, minist data set that, that, that is available online. And uh, we have already discussed about that, this data set and how things are going on in the previous video. So we would directly run this. And as you can see, even in importing part, it is taking a lot of time, not a lot of time, but yeah, it is taking around 20 seconds around. Uh, so this time it was fast. So that is the reason uh, Google Collaborator is considered. Now we will download the data. So you can see it uh, in, imports everything that has been available and it acts similarly like the Google Collaborator on your laptop. The only difference is it is really slow. Now, even the visualization wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem. I would uh, do simply... 120 uh, and at 20 yeah it's yeah, yeah it's working totally fine now coming to the shape part now declaring data now let's uh, define the model 
now model has been defined now the mod we will compile the model and we would simply run the epochs uh, okay i would just stop this i won't make this really long i would just do epochs 5 for now because you know it would take a lot of time you can see it's taking so long for just running a, a very small models uh, epochs and yeah that is the reason we use google collaboratory because uh, uh, preferably i don't have a cpu uh, i mean gpu in my laptop so uh, my laptop is totally dependent on the cpu part hence it, it, it is a very slow process so uh, yeah i would just you know in that while i would just make, uh, create a new file and i would simply do new file and in new file i would do save as uh, if I simply do save as I write any name that is hello.ipnb you just need to write hello.ipnb it is known as uh, a magic python notebook and I would simply put enter and it is it would be recognized as a magic python notebook hence after this uh, once you are done with this whenever you open the notebook it would just display that as the uh, a normal uh, good Jupyter lab notebook you uh, for, for a fun fact, I would also like to tell you that Jupyter Notebook is also available online. But yeah, when Google Collaboratory is there, why do you even need another platform? Because Google Co Co Collaboratory is uh, awesome. So yeah, uh, our model is done running. So you can see the model was done here. Now I would just simply print the accuracy. So yeah, the accuracy is 98.12%. That's pretty nice. But the main focus of this video was not to tell you about any tensorflow or anything my main focus was just to tell you about how you can put tensorflow and machine learning frameworks in your local machine and just run it as a, a, a normal model if you want you can even do that in a normal python notebook but things won't work really well there there would be a lot of problems coming to the part uh, the text part and also the uh, repository repositories part and the frameworks loading and all so it's always preferred that you use jupyter notebooks for that because they are in high demand for the part of machine learning even all the tutorials that you will see on internet that are available uh, are part of google collaboratory and jupyter lab so yeah jupyter notebook is a really nice thing for machine learning part so you can just simply go to extensions here in and download the jupyter notebook extension from here and just restart your visual studio code so yeah if you want i would in future make another video in which if you want you can even use the azure notebook uh, azure notebook for uh, running this but for uh, for running that you will need an azure account and yeah things are a bit complicated there so for now we will stick to the jupyter notebook part and in, in future videos i would try to uh, use only google collaboratory because uh, it, it's a shareable link for all the viewers and plus it is the fastest uh, for for machine learning so yeah, this was it for the video. Thank you and have a nice day.